Today we are doing a manicure with this product. As you can see, this one has a glow. The other one doesn't have a glow. I mean, the manicures that we did last time. So today you guys requested. We tried this and I have actually, I bought it a while ago and I forgot I had it. I know it's terrible. And so I'm excited to try it. So we're gonna use very simple things. So we're going to start the manicure with the OPI repair mode just to um, condition the nails a little bit. Um, a simple file from soft touch nice little buffer to smooth the free edges with soft touch as well and this um, drill bit from Erica and the Melody Susie if I'm talking about everything and by the way an alcohol <laughs> just to wipe the nails okay so this is going to be at home very quick manicure um, so the lighting is a little weird but I kind of like it so we're gonna shorten the nails by the way so my mom took the polish off yesterday and I recommend having a day or two without nail polish. I talk about it often. But I really think it benefits long term, the nails. Oops, I forgot. Let's do this first. Because we want this to sit on the nails for 10 minutes before we wipe the nails. Seriously, my dog is licking herself. She's licking her tummy. <laughs> no. This is a stain from um, fruit, I think. So I'm going to do two coats. The nails are actually in a pretty good shape. Uh, what I recommend is to take the polish off after six days, five, six days. And then I think the best uh, thing to do is to shorten the nails, you know, because sometimes in those two days when the nails are a little bit too long for the, the lifestyle that, you know, the person has, you can break them. And this is what happens um, here and here. And here a little bit so on one hand i do understand when people say that the polish uh, protects the nails because it gives it it gives the nails like a hard coating but at the same time nail polish can also damage the nails so for long term i think it's better to give the nails a day or two break and do the warm oil soak apply the oil and keep the nails at a good length so breaks don't happen. When the nails are in a better condition, I noticed that when you put the OPI repair mode, it doesn't soak in very quickly. It kind of like sits on the surface, which is okay. It's just, I guess it means that the nails are a little bit less porous or something. Could be.
You know what, guys, when the nails, when the nails are damaged, when the surface of the nails is damaged and it starts to peel, it starts to usually peel, break, or catch. Um, especially when people are wearing <clears throat> a lot of nail polish. You know what gets to blame is the acetone, one thing, and then filing with the wrong files or filing both directions. And really, it's not none of that. It's actually the nail polish that can cause some surface damage. So filing in both directions is perfectly fine. Um, acetone does not damage the nails. It, it will very temporarily dehydrate the nail, but it's, it cannot damage the nails. And the nail hydrates in a few seconds when you even touch it with your hands or from the moisture in the air. So it's not, it's not causing the damage that people are talking about. It uncovers a lot of the damage, that's for sure. see these unevenness these uneven areas this is from picking from doing this um, I get questions a lot of questions about this um, and I don't know why it's usually people are picking their their thumbs or even like rubbing like this can actually damage the surface of the nail and as you can see this is this is an example. So the only thing is to try to protect the skin as much as possible and just try to stop the rubbing or the picking. It's really difficult to, to just stop a habit. So the best thing to do is to create a new habit, to apply the oils. Every time you feel something mm, catching or uneven, Okay, so this one is a little bit louder, the machine. I have it on 9,000 RPM. It's weird. Actually, I'm going to use it on lower. Each machine is different. Actually, even seven, six. Yeah. The one that I have at work, I use it at 10,000 usually. So someone made a very good comment on, or asked a very good question. Uh, one of my um, content creator friends, Crystal from Love's, Love Fresh Paint, I love the name. Anyway, um, Crystal was talking about how to get rid of, I guess, these calluses here sometimes, like hard skin. And the person asked if the filing is a good thing or um, a bad thing. So basically, she asked, like, isn't it like with calluses on the heels that the more you file, the more callus you get? It's a, it's a brilliant question. So my answer to this is this. Um, if these pieces here don't really bother you, because it's normal for the skin to have more keratin, around the nails. That's just, that's how we are created. So if that doesn't bother you, don't worry about it. The most important thing is to use proper creams to soften that area. Obviously, carousel sometimes helps um, using lotions too that have urea, 
some sort of acid, so like lactic acid, glycolic acid, sometimes salicylic acid, that helps to keep this area nice and soft. But if this doesn't work, and it sometimes it just doesn't, sometimes you just have this piece that drives you nuts. So instead of picking it, it's better to smooth it. And this is what I'm doing. Actually, my mom doesn't have it much, so I really don't have to do it. So if you, so don't think that this is a proper uh, part of manicure that you just have to file here. You don't have to. Um, you just do when there is really a hard piece that you know that the person is going to be picking or it bothers you. So I'll go around here and then just try to smooth this a little bit. So where I'm going with this. This smoothing is not going to cause the callus to grow more because we're not overdoing it. So the key is to smooth it. So when you see me sometimes even do my own nails and I go around with the file a little bit, I try to smooth it and then I feel for the skin. If the skin is soft or like improved, if it's not catching, I just let it go. I don't try to remove the callus. And same thing goes for the feet. I never remove the callus, I smooth it. And then I promise you, you will not end up with more callus. I used to, when I was growing up in Poland, I guess I thought, and many of us did, that using those blades is a great idea, you know, the, the, the kind of a razor to get rid of the hard skin. And the thing is, by doing that, I actually always have had something to cut because the skin got harder and harder. So then I had more and more to cut. Now I barely do any exfoliation. I do it actually weekly, but very little. I use proper creams and I'm actually on my feet a lot. I walk a lot and I don't have calluses. So mind you, it's absolutely normal to have a little bit of harder skin on your heels. So it actually pains me to see that sometimes even podiatrists, they remove so much callus that the heels are pink. The heels are not supposed to be pink. We're supposed to have some skin to protect our foot because if that skin is pink after you remove the callus, you've done way too much. You've irritated the skin, you created a trauma, and for sure then the body is going to create more callus because your body is going to anticipate further damage. And very often what people are trying to do, and I know I'm repeating myself, but this is so important, they try to remove all this dry skin. So yes, the skin, especially and I'm filing too, it's going to be dry, it's going to be dusty. So I'm not trying to remove dry skin by doing that here. I'm just trying to smooth the skin, exfoliate a little bit. Once it feels smoother, uh, that's it. My job is done. I don't try to remove dry skin. Actually, I made a very good video explaining why I leave dry skin behind and the cuticle behind. So I'm gonna list it in the uh, description box. So I'm just going to now follow the, the movements of the file just to smooth the, the ends. And I'm not gonna buff the nails or anything not even where the cuticle was, because it's fine. We're just doing a clear nail polish. So I'm just going to do this very simple thing. This is the best lint free the wipe. And pure alcohol, this is like a 70%, I guess, or 99 probably. I think it's 99 or 90. Okay, on to the 
beautiful nail polish. I'm not a huge fan of the brush, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, this is kind of wide, this part. It's not super comfortable. I prefer the oval brushes, but this one is actually not bad. For these polishes, it doesn't really matter as much because we're not really, you know, for reds, for like really bright or dark polishes, it's more important to have the oval brush, but this is actually not bad. So you see how pink this is? So this one has the optical brightener. And this is sometimes confusing because a lot of those polishes, they call it a glow polish you know, like the Essie, um, like Essence, but they're actually not glowing. And there are two, as far as I know, ingredients that are like optical brighteners. And some of the polishes have them, and some of them are just basically like a clear polish with some red tint, so like a pink tint polish. So these ones tend to be sometimes quite bright. Some people like it, some people don't. On some people, it can look very purple, so it might look a little weird, depends on the skin tone. But these tend to fade quite quickly. So some of them fade within a day or two. Some of them a little bit longer. Okay, let's see, see how this looks. Let's see how quickly this dries. Yeah, wow, that's very, very quick. All right, we're gonna do two coats. So last time I used the manicures, I also do two, did two coats, so let's compare it properly. We'll do two and two. By the way, um, if you guys have seen my previous videos, I talk a lot about the Dior Nail Glow, how I loved it. But I'm hearing more and more that the new formula is not as good. So before you spend 30 bucks on a clear nail polish, pretty much, which used to be gorgeous, it was just worth to me because it lasted for a very long time. It didn't fade. It didn't, didn't thicken up. So it was, it was worth it. But now I'm hearing more and more that that new formula is just not good. And I really haven't had a chance to really test it. Uh, because it's impossible for me to test it on myself, unfortunately, because I just, you know, destroy nail polish when I'm working. So it would not be a fair comparison, but one of these days I will. Okay, so far, I think the application is excellent. Very good. The brush is good. It's okay. We'll see how the shine is once it dries, because the polishes, once they have, when they still have the solvents in them, are really glossy, really plump. But once the solvents evaporate, that changes. They kind of shrink. Okay, so I'm going to give it three minutes. And we'll be right, you know what, this is drying. Okay, so three minutes. Okay, it's been two minutes. You know what, it dried very fast, very well. So I'm going to now apply oil. So now after a manicure, I always apply a little bit more oil because, because I like the oil to kind of seep in everywhere and makes everything look good. But when I use oil after each hand wash, I just use one drop for all my nails. So my mom was saying that the polish looks really nice and fresh. Looks like the nails are not polished, but nice, fresh looking. I'm going to take a picture in a different lighting for you guys. So you can see. I think this is brighter than Dior Nail Glow, but I'm not sure. It does have that pinkish glow as opposed to purple glow that some polishes have. And I don't know how that is possible because mm, 
they all have similar ingredients, but somehow. So I'm going to use something that I don't show often because I actually have it at home. So this is from Be Natural and I, Be Naturals, and I got it from them as a gift. And I have to say that this is a beautiful, beautiful cream. It's really thick, um, but I use it at night, and it really the next day when I wake up, my hands are really nice and soft. So I highly recommend it. But I actually don't know if they make it. So I should contact them and ask if they are making it because I looked in through their store and I don't see it. So if you like greasy creams, this is excellent. It's, it's very velvety though. Like it is very rich. It feels good. You need a small amount. At night, it's a very good cream. So I'm going to give you a quick update on how this looks in two days, if it still has that glow or not, and then how it lasted for about six days. Okay, this is, again, looks purple because it's from fruit, blueberries or something. My mom was making. So you see in the... In the normal light, it's not visible. It looks like a clear nail polish. And then it glows. Mm. 